Hi everyone, this is Shali Kumar again from Oski Nurse Training, Cambridge. I'm an experienced Oski Nurse Trainer for the NMC Oski Exam in UK and also the lead trainer for Oski Nurse Training, Cambridge. And I'm also a NMC registered nurse with lots of clinical experience. Um, uh, so I'm back with another NMC OSCE video for you. Uh, so if you do like my videos, please press the like button, subscribe and share it with your other friends who are preparing for their NMC OSCE exam. Uh, the whole purpose of me doing these videos to help you with your preparation and revision. And thank you so much for sending so much positive feedback. I'm overwhelmed to be honest at times uh, to see how much support you give me and you like the videos, you were passing, you sending the messages. It just all really, uh, you know it's a good motivation for me to keep going and i was just looking at it we got lots and lots of videos on the channel now and uh, it's been three years the channel been going so uh, i guess uh, my motivation of keep going is your feedback okay so keep uh, keep sending that um so today's video now important one uh, not a lot has changed in this station but uh, a fair amount has changed and sometime when you're not aware of the changes uh, it can be challenging in exam so we are talking about the im injection i've already done the videos on im injection which you can watch on my youtube channel actually the technique of im hasn't changed but there are subtle changes in marking criteria which happened last year but then again there is another few changes we've been seeing in the test center okay so I really do want to share that with you so you don't get any surprise in exam and of course we're going to talk about what uh, because of these changes what have been the most recent fails okay in this station so you are very clearly aware of them uh, we will talk through changes we will uh, talk through how to incorporate those changes in your uh, in your exam now for the IM injection in this clinical skill and also what is the most recent you know what, what the recent fails have been for this station so you can watch out uh, for those and not make those mistakes okay so let's get started so uh, first thing is you know the timing hasn't changed the station is still 12 minutes you still need to give im injection so that hasn't changed uh, but the change has been which is taking by surprise for some of the nurses who go into exam like IM injection is IM injection but still if you're not aware then sometimes it can take you by surprise these little changes so what has changed now so far we always uh, seen like uh, B12 inject preparation which is a hydroxycobalamin some kind of cobalamin preparation in IM injection but that has been recently changing with other drugs and one of uh, them is can be like antibiotic like streptomycin okay it's just an example but it can other drugs are getting used now for im injection in your exam is not always uh, cobalamin okay so that's the first thing to remember so you shouldn't assume things okay second change it came out last year uh, but it still can be quite confusing for some nurses uh, especially uh, because subcutaneous injection we still wear ppe but in im we don't need to wear ppe anymore so it means no gloves and apron you can draw with contamin uh, you decontaminate your hand you can draw up and then you can uh, uh, with the drawing needle and then you can chain the needle and put the giving needle on then clean your hands again and give the injection okay so you really don't need to wear gloves to prepare or to give the injection uh, so those has been the two big changes which have been happening over last few months like i said they did come in last year but we are seeing more and more of that now and it can be a cause of uh, a bit of a confusion for nurses so i wanted to clear that out i've already done the im video so you can go ahead and watch the technique hasn't changed so the technique is still correct okay so let's look at a little bit more into depth for these changes now how do you incorporate these changes clearly in your in your station so let's have a look at the first one which we talked about the um, change in uh, drug so let's look at the next screen streptomycin so means how does that change your station it doesn't actually change the technique of im injection but it does change the indication because you need to take a clear informed consent from your patient so when you're taking consent of course you need to tell the patient what the drug you're going to give okay and why you're giving it 
uh, streptomycin normally is set in community so your GP has prescribed it for your infection of course the scenario will be there to guide you why your patient is having that antibiotic okay so what's the indication here but anyway it is an antibiotic and you need to explain clearly to the patient so it's really important that you give indication uh, of that drug to your patient before you take consent because without that it's no informed consent and again you can give some side effects to your patient like streptomycin it could be diarrhea it can sometimes cause bronchospasm it can actually in some patient might cause some dizziness um, it can have a hearing effects it can also decrease the appetite sometime uh, so you know those are the just the common side effects uh, if you want uh, of course you want to tell your patient uh, when uh, because it's important that you inform your patient so those are the, those are the things how you incorporate that so you uh, so don't assume that is uh, you know you need to look at the drug and you need to talk about uh, talk about that okay uh, another thing now which is very important now which is again confusing the nurses is the dose now uh, a stock dose can be different to the prescribed dose so stock dose means the vial they have given you could have different uh, uh, amount in it then you can actually need actually need to give for example uh, now streptomycin you normally is 1000 milligram in one mil so uh, so if that's the case and you've been given because streptomycin is usually depends on patient weight but you don't need to work out the weight and all that you need to just give the correct dose so if your prescription is saying 900 milligram or 7 or 800 milligram whatever it is then you need to have the exact amount so if 1000 mils in one mil then every point of the mil not 0.1 mil equals 200 milligram of course so if you are going if your prescribed dose your stock dose is 1000 milligram in that one mil injection but your prescribed dose is 900 then of course you're going to give 0.9 mil of that you're not going to give full one mil you're give, going to give 0.9 mil so that can be actually uh, a confusion in exam so just be careful that your stock dose can be different than your prescribed dose okay um, it is a simple calculation but if you get yourself flustered then it can be difficult so that's why i'm pointing it out so now let's look at the hydroxy hydroxocobalamine which is your b12 preparation which been coming for a long time as well uh, so we we may as well talk about it again because the stock dose uh, in the exam can be different to the prescribed dose again you need to give indication to the patient that it is a b12 preparation is used for perinitious anemia uh, patients take a every few months uh, and then you would have read the scenario that again is normally in community that the GP has prescribed that for your patient for pernicious anemia again side effects again can be like bit of diarrhea um, a bit of nausea and all that uh, and then again like I said the stock dose can be different to the prescribed dose for example uh, so it's 5 milligram per 5 mil normally that's how uh, uh, cobalamin comes 5 milligram in one 5 mils it means 1 milligram per mil it is so if your prescribed dose is 1 milligram then you only need to give 1 mil of the vial okay they given you 5 mil but you only need to take 1 mil if it's 2 mil then it's 2 mil if it's 2 gram so it's 1 gram per 1 mil so remember that okay so if your prescribed dose is 1 milligram then you're going to take 1 mil of that vial so again very simple but if you were not expecting that then it can be a reason for a bit of a, uh, confusion there which you don't want in your exam right okay so i hope that makes a little bit clearer about the difference in medication why is it important because you need to give correct indication to patient to get a in valid informed consent okay if you don't give correct indication to the patient then it's not a valid consent so that's really important uh, now what we're going to look at the next screen now so we're going to just sum up what has been the recent critical fails in this station of course like i said i've already done the other video i will put the link of the video of the im injection showing you how to do im injection in in, in the description of this video but uh, only change is you don't need to wear 
any gloves. Uh, in that video, I'm wearing it, but you don't need to wear that anymore. But otherwise, it's correct the technique. So let's look at the recent critical uh, fails now. Of course, ID check, color D check against the correct page of the prescription is really important because the first page says the scenario and then the inside page, of course, uh, you know, you will get the prescription for this injection you're going to give. So you do need to make sure that uh, you uh, have the page ready with the ID and alert details to check against your uh, whatever you're checking with your patient when you're checking their ID and alert status you need to verbalize that is correct in your prescription as well um, not checking the validity of the prescription now that has been the massive fail in any skills or implementation station when you don't check the validity of the prescription you're giving a drug so you have to check the full validity of the prescription okay uh, so again, I'm sh uh, next one is not doing all the drug checks. You're giving drugs. So if you don't check the name of the drug, the dose, the expiry, then again, it would be a critical fail. You know that already. So it's not about just doing the IM injection. It's making sure you do all the five rights of medication as well. Next one is getting confused between stocked and prescribed dose. That's why I've done this video again. So it just make you understand that the prescribed dose can be different than the stock dose. Next one is, um, yeah, so because we are not wearing PPE now, so it's absolutely, absolutely important that you clean your hands before you prepare the injection and then uh, you clean your hands again before giving the injection just before okay so it's, it's absolutely important uh, just a quick thing to mention you do not need to clean the skin you do need to clean the vial before you draw up the injection uh, but you do not need to clean clean the skin with alcohol anymore if you declare it's visually clean okay so that's the another change slightly okay you can clean if you wish to do so but you don't have to if you declare that the skin is visually clean then you don't need to um, so that's really important another one is resheathing uh, so when you draw up the injection im injection you draw up with the drawing needle take the air out with the drawing needle then take the needle off the base and put it into the sharp pin rather resheath or recap okay that's absolutely not allowed do not recap or resheath needles and also when you dispose of after giving the so you draw up with drawing needle then you take it off the base put in the sharp pin then you put the giving needle on which is your um, safety lock needle okay I will show you that in the next screen but that's your safety lock needle so before you put it into the sharp pin you need to activate the lock and I will show you in the next screen how to activate the lock okay so that's really important and they do use the safety needle as giving needle in exam is always a safety lock needle uh, your drawing needle doesn't have safety lock on it but your giving needle does um, next one goes without saying that you need to make sure you're documenting it correctly now documenting correctly what the, so making sure that that uh, your signature date and time is very very clear and time is what's in the scenario not what's on the clock at that time so that's a very easy mistake to make looking at the clock and putting that time no time should be what is the due time in your prescription so I hope that makes it clearer. So let's go to the next screen. I did promise you that I will show you how to uh, lock the safety, uh, activate the lock. So as you can see on the screen, you got a needle there where the safety lock, you have pulled it away to give your injection. So, uh, so now you have given the injection you are pushing it down against a hard surface can you see the middle picture you're pushing it down and once you fully push it down as you can see on the right it will click it means it's the needle the shield is fully locked on the needle and now you can put the needle and the syringe together in the sharp pin okay so that's how you would do it okay so uh, you don't need to necessarily uh, take the needle apart you can put uh, put it together in the sharp pin uh, so i hope that makes it now clear for you what to what mistakes not to make in your IM injection and that you're not surprised if you get a different drug than uh, cobalamine and uh, you're not confused with the prescribed and stock dose i hope that helps uh, so uh, if you like the video please press like and subscribe uh, share it with your friend if you do want to know more about our training go to austinastraining.com or email us on austinastraining at outlook.com 
I will soon be back with another video for you. So bye for now.